my name is Miguel Robles, and I am an immigrant, and I have been working for many years in globalization, democracy, human rights, but from the past 10 years, I have been focused more in, in immigrant rights in the Bay Area. In Spanish, I don't have an accent. If you don't understand something, it's because it's not my... <laughs> so, and basically, in my work with in immigrant rights, I have learned a lot about what are the, the problems that we have educating our communities. And you can think, you maybe wonder why we have, este, these are my projects, the Latin America Alliance for Immigrant Rights, then we jumped into Biosafety Alliance, and now we are working on the Sol Solnol Coalition. Maybe you wonder why I jump from immigration to, to climate change, and it's very simple. In 2006, I made this documentary that is called Surviving in the Empire. And then I have to research and find a lot of information about what have, how have been the past 150 years, the laws about immigration in the U.S. And, and with different information and facts that we found, we, we realized that it's very well connected. Food, in, is the food immigration, food justice, and, and agriculture, and in also, I'm sorry, let me go back. So you can see all the problems that we face as immigrants since 1940s the, during the Bracero program, before the creation of the UFW. There were a lot of different strikes in different places. Our people is poisoned every year in, 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 in the fields. And I also, as Mexican, I have a lot of concerns about GMO corn. It's our staple food. In 2001, Ignacio Chapela released a report on it, and we have in 2011 also the release of alfalfa with our GMO alfalfa with our restrictions, and also they approved the this Roundup Ready Sugar Beets. So we created the Biosafety Alliance to connect it with the movement in Mexico against GMO corn, and we start organizing different conferences and supporting different level in the efforts in different states in California, Proposition 27, in Washington, in Portland, Oregon. And we have different scientists and, and a lot of graduate or organizers also. But at the same time, we realized that the leveling campaigns were not going really far. Still, we are working against the Dark Act in, in different campaigns. We are part of the Californians for GE leveling. But now, since two years ago, I see that a lot of different organizations that have been organizing against GMOs, against Monsanto, they are turning into regenerative agriculture. That is another way to combat industrial agriculture. And the symbol of industrial agriculture are GMOs. So it's totally connected. So in 2000, in, we, I have also been organizing a lot in immigrant communities with Latinos for Proposition 27, that was this historic proposition for GMO leveling in California. I was the field organizer for Spanish speakers in California. And the results that, that we have at the end, after the elections, we have 42% in support from whites to Proposition 27, 52 from African Americans and 61 from Latinos. So we didn't lose, we, we won the Proposition 27 because also, we have a lot of radio programs in Spanish in commercial radio stations, and we've been talking about our staple food, about corn, our concerns with our traditional food, and what happened is, of course, people is very concerned about their food, and, and they support the Proposition 27. So we have been organizing a very small este, events, big events, conferences. We have been talking, educating in, in radio programs. And also, during these radio programs, what I realized is that the, the only way to, con, to educate or to organize people is when they are in a crisis. So, the, during this time with radio programs, we, this is about the Mexican, I'm sorry, this is a long... Okay, now I, I, I am coming to this. So, this crisis on health in, in Latino communities and people of color with diabetes, with... is caused by, by the Western diet and all these chronic diseases that are associated. And that has been our main tool to educate our communities. And we, ha we have been educating about all the problems, the comp comp comparing traditional and industrialized food. 
processed food, and we also have connecting this with GMOs that are totally connected, the corporate control of the, co the food system. And also we talk a lot about this core be beliefs that the, about the corporate com consumption complex and that are always promoting that we have the free choice, that government don't, cannot este, influence the decision of consumers, all this kind of st stuff that are false truths. And what we see now as a consequence is that, is, and, and we see how the, the Groceries Manufacturers Association are working in this kind of bill, the Dark Act, last week we have to to mobilize all the, the different groups that we are working on, on against GMOs. And also, two years ago, I was part of the soda tax in San Francisco, the campaign. And in 30 years ago, if you went to San Francisco General Hospital, you can see that 75% of the patients that people coming to San Francisco General Hospital were coming for problems related to AIDS. 30 years after, 75% of the people who come to the San Francisco General Hospital is for problems related to consumption of sugar and junk food. So then we create this project that is Hormigas Organicas and we start teaching or facilitating workshops with immigrants and, and Spanish speakers how to grow their own food. And this was very successful. And also we have been talking a lot about the special period in Cuba when there was another crisis in which they ran out of the fossil fuels and agrochemicals. And yes, they, a lot of people talk about hunger. You can see in the bottom that they, I don't know, it's not working. Ah, yes, there. You can see, uh, what is it? Ah, it's here. Okay, they were talking about hunger, famine, malnutrition. But the, the, in fact, there was an explosion of, on urban farming in Cuba that now they produce more food per a square meter than any other country in the world. And the positive in cap, in, in impact in that time was less env environmental pollution, lower cases of diabetes, cardiovascular, and other food-related diseases. So it was good, and now that they overcome this, after they overcome this, this special period, we see that all these problems with health came back or are coming back to Cuba, and now with the U.S. coming with all the corporations, it's going to get worse, right? So... Uh, so this is what you can see in Cuba. And, and then I'm going to come now into my current work. I have very few minutes. And that is the, the Soul Not All Coalition. And basically what we are trying to do is to connect the environmental movement with the, the food justice and the anti-industrial agriculture movement. And in 2015 was the International Year of Souls. And... Coincidentally, we start working in, in, in different, different people working in campaigns for regenerate, promoting regenerative agriculture. And we, we, we este, have been learning a lot. Every day we learn more how we rely on soils for everything. We are the tip of the huge, this huge pyramid that is supported by soils, by microorganisms. I'm sorry, that one is in Spanish, right? Sorry. And, and este, so we create the Soil Not Oil, and the main goals of the Soil Not Oil coalition is to go from this speech of talking points from the environmental movement that are talking of, always blaming on fossil fuels and power plants and cars, to talk about industrial agriculture, and to go to agroecological practices, to talk about healthy soil, to restore ecosystems and, and sequester carbon. And we have all the facts, over 30% of the carbon releases coming from soils. And we, we want to go from a backwards practice to... And, and we can see also the... I'm sorry that I am very fast, there are a lot of slides and, and I have very few minutes. So, and, and we are now talking a lot in, in radio programs. The conference that I am organizing in August this year, the Soul Not All, is the second one. And it's not just the conference, but it's a campaign. Yesterday, I two days ago, I had a presentation. We're organizing different presentations and promoting these presentations in radio programs in Spanish, in commercial radio stations or in community radio. So our impact is greater, it's more massive. And, and we are talking about all these facts, how we went from traditional farming with a small scale traditional farming to, that has fed the world for thousands of years. Actually, currently, over 80% of the food that is processed in the world 
in the world is coming from small farms in Africa and Latin America, and a lot of these farmers are women. So we went from there to, to the Green Revolution that was, has been terrible, and we have to go into agroecological practices. I am finishing. So after the Paris climate este, gathering in 2015, we realized that now they're going to in, include in, the, in any future gathering about climate change the topic of soils. It has been a lot of work. We are work supporting this, the 4 per 1,000 initiative. If you haven't seen this one, you can go on the web and check about it. And well, thank you so much. This is amazing what you are doing because you are also composting and you are recycling organic material. Thank you. Yeah, he'll, that's, thank you, Miguel, and hopefully it's become clear to you that it is all connected, and that's why you're here, and we want to hear this side of the story as well. It's not all just recycling and composting, so. <laughs> um, one burning question. Do I have a hand? I'm going to go way back, because you guys probably don't get as much attention back there. Uh, well, we we are um, we are a cross sector coalition. We invite from slow money, RSF, all the social investors to elected officials, grassroots organizations. You know, we try to be very inclusive. Actually, in our conference, I try to la last year we gave for free maybe sixty percent of the tickets. You know, and we are very interested to cross pollinate with as much people as possible. I have some flyers and some brochures. If you are interested, maybe I'm going to try to put them on a the table or something. Yeah, we have the knicker booth out there. You can move them. And you'll be here all day? Uh, I'm going to be around for a while. Okay. He's going to be around for a while, so um, maybe you can try and grab him at the break. Thanks again, Miguel. <laughs>